Um, oh, fantastic. I so love this. So Yay! thank you so much. Fun. Oh, my God. It's a pleasure. And what I love most is that the four of you are really together in yeah. this film. It's By great. now, you must be just finishing each other's sentences. You know what? I think we really do know each other well enough to do that. I think we're still polite enough not to. Um, although I think Kristen and I finish each, each other's sentences often. Um, but this was probably the most wonderful experience we had as a cast together because we were away from our closest friends and family. We really lived together. We ate every single meal together. We stayed in one dressing room together. We slept on the same bed together. We ate the same meals. I know what everybody likes to eat at what time of day and how they like it fixed and who likes their meat rare and who wants a cheese sandwich and who wants mustard on the cheese and who wants to drink tea all day, Cynthia Nixon. Um, and it's just, it, it's, it was the best. I wouldn't have traded it for anything. And despite being away from home and my children, which was, that was too long and much too much of a hardship, I wouldn't have done it with any other group of people. And was it kind of refreshing, too, that not being here in the city, whenever you're shooting in New York City, yeah. mobs, or as I say, gabillions of fans, <laughs> but when you're there, not well, so many people look, do. We love being on the streets with people that are curious about what we're doing. I personally really, really love it. The paparazzi issue is something entirely separate. But it was nice to not worry about plot being revealed. We were in a country that had no interest in us, and really our job was to stay out of their way. I mean, they were in the middle of their lives and jobs and working, and we were in the souk and standing in front of their stalls and stopping business. So it was really our job to really kind of integrate into their lives, and they had little or no interest in us. And it was, it was a virtue because it really allowed us to tell our story in an open environment and capture cinematically everything we wanted to on screen. So I think we were really lucky. Yeah. Uh, Michael Patrick King is such a fantastic, you know, such a great writer. Unbelievable. He's a really Someone. special, 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 special person. Yeah. The lines in this movie are just, like some of them, you just howl at laugh. <laughs> but he obviously listens to the fans, me being one of them. And the first thing I said to him after we talking to him in the first film was, Aiden, where's Aiden? Oh. He listens. He listens to the fans. Was it I great know. to reunite with John Corbett? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was heaven. And I think what was so great about it, for all of us, is that he was in, similar to Jennifer Hudson coming onto the movie last time, was there was this fresh person who hadn't been down the trenches with us, you know, and what was really, really, really special about what John did, and I can't say enough of how hard this is, he's been absent for eight years, and he had three days to do this stuff. And Michael had written, in my opinion, some of the best scenes he's ever written in his life, as if he'd been writing Aiden for the last ten years. And John Corbett had to come on and freaking knock the ball out of the park, and he did. The first scene when they see each other in those lines and... That sound of his voice and the look on the face and the way he holds Carrie and touches her and talks to her, it, it, he's magic. He's magic. And then to get to come home to Chris, it's like having your cake and eating it, too. It's ridiculous. Yeah, my heart really bleeds for you. I know. <laughs> it's horrible. Now, there are so many fun things in this uh, film, but let's, a couple things I want to touch on are, now, is there an art to camel riding? Because, honestly, I don't think as, as a camel As it turns out, rider. no, I was the one that enjoyed it. I was the one that sat on the camel while they were chained to the cameras with my New York Times in my back pocket, looking at the scenery, taking, I have more pictures on my freaking Blackberry of those girls on camels. I was the one. So I know I might be a city dweller, but apparently you can put a city dweller happily on a camel. And yes, there is an art to it. Did we figure it out? No. Was Kim screaming? Yes. Was I laughing with tears streaming down my face? Absolutely. And karaoke. Now, were you a karaoke girl? No, 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 no. I find it incredibly depressing. Really, seriously, I find it really depressing. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I've... I've my, made my own attempts at singing professionally, but the idea of doing it voluntarily in front of a crowd of apparently the mostly drunk people, it's just really, I just, I, I would honestly rather be changing diapers, which I secretly love, so that's not a very good comparison. <laughs> and I like the dentist. I'd rather be, um, I'd rather be late for anything, which is a horrible feeling, than sing karaoke. Yeah. I'm so with you on that. I really don't Why like it. Why is it so depressing? It is. It is very sad. <laughs> That's a whole other interview <laughs> okay, for sure. Sorry. Okay. Now, I would think, you know, what I love also is that 
these issues are so real, and you're, you're not trying to be 25 again. You're not yeah, well, constantly in your closet. I mean, yes. you're in the closet. No, 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 no. But um, no, you're really dealing with you. things that you, as even Sarah Jessica Parker, can relate to. Mm-hmm. Whether it's sitting on a couch and watching TV mm-hmm. with your husband. So what? We all mm-hmm. do that. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. how you're growing old together. Yeah, yeah. So real issues. Yeah. Wow. But I think that's, you know... For the detractors, I think that's the thing that they haven't wanted to pay attention to, is that Michael Patrick is no fool, and he doesn't do the easy, lazy thing. He has always written substantive stories, and this time he gets to really look at all the women at a particular moment in their lives. And the last movie, it dealt more with what was happening in Carrie's personal romantic life. But this movie, he really talks about things that are important to women at this moment, it's not all women, and it's not you wouldn't wouldn't even have to have experienced menopause to ha- to hear Kim's character talk about it. And it's humorous, and it's scandalous, and it's funny, and it's heartbreaking because it's real and it's complicated. But he just he tells stories so well. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting uh, fact when you and her and Big are, are talking about you know he wants a, two days away to go away somewhere mm-hmm. and whatever, which you know isn't a bad thing. All, no, 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 no. But do you have somewhere that you like to go to kind of get away from it all? Honestly, when I, I feel like the time that I have, after I drop my son off in the morning and I'm walking home alone between getting home and, that, and dropping him off, there's about a seven-minute period, a stretch, that is, especially on a nice day in New York, it's like time stands still for a minute. And I'm just by myself and just walking on the streets of New York and maybe grocery shopping for a second. or That's enough for me. You know, that's as much as I'm going to get anyway. Yeah. Do you so, have a place in Ireland that you go with the family? Yeah, we have a home in Ireland. Matthew's family has had a home there for about 40 years. And um, when we go, when we can, although we've outgrown our tiny wee house, we don't know what we're going to do. But we shall not forsake Ireland. Yeah, beautiful country. It's beautiful. Okay, so I know, I mean, obviously this character is going to live on with you forever. There's no way <laughs> that she couldn't. But, no. you know, and I, let's hope he, Michael Patrick has a three in his head, I'm hoping. <laughs> but, you know, one day you're going to have to say goodbye to Carrie Bradshaw. Yeah. Is that a tough thing? Like, does it get you all emotional? or? No, I'll tell you, my more is the connection with the audience. Um, I mean, this has been the privilege of a lifetime professionally. Um I reckon I've already reconciled that this will come to an end, and it's best to know when that should be and be realistic about it. But I feel so good about the choices that Michael's made for these characters and their stories that if we left them today and this is where they were, I'd be okay. I'd miss the people and the camaraderie and the sorority, and I'd miss the experience on the streets of New York. But I have such a vivid memory of all of it, and it's enough to get me to my grave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you have a few other things going on in your life, too. We'll see. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> you have so much. It's all I mean, there's so much stuff you're doing. There is. It's really, I feel very lucky. Very, very lucky. Well, you're very amazing. You're such a wonderful <laughs> person, you. and you deserve all the success that you have. That's very nice Thank of you. you so much. Thank Always you. lovely it's to so talk to you. so nice to see Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you. Be good. Girls, They're it? great. Thank you.